Tacoma's population in 2000 was about 200,000 and has been growing by about 9% each year. If this continues, what will Tacoma's population be in 2017? For this problem, I want you to first think about what you would do without using a formula. So before you default to some formula, let's actually try and process what's happening in this case. Okay, I'm going to make a t-chart to help organize my thinking. First, I want to think about what is my rate. The problem tells me that it's growing at a rate of 9% each year. I'm going to write that down. So if I think about just how to find this using my knowledge about general percents, I can actually think of this as every single year my number is going to increase by 9%. But what makes this tricky is that it's 9% of whatever the previous year was. Let's first start with what we know about 2000. So in the year 2000, we had 200,000 people. So in the next year, I can think about that I'm actually going to be adding on to my 200,000. So it's really 200,000 plus 9% of the 200,000. Now, if we think back to like a tape diagram, um, we might draw something like this. And this represents my whole or one. And my whole is 200,000 people. Now, I know that in the year 2001, what happened was I took this number and I need to put on 9% more. That's not a perfectly proportioned drawing, but you get the picture. So I'm going to add on 9% of the 200,000. So in order to find this 9%, I'm actually going to need to do 200,000 times 0 0.09 for 9%. So this is going to give me just that little tiny piece right here. Okay, that's fine, but there's a quicker way to do it to figure out what would be this new number. And that would be that I would multiply it times 1.09. Now the reason for the one is because we're literally accounting for this whole. So we're saying that in 2001, I have this whole plus that 9%. And literally what I can think of this as, I have one whole plus the 0 0.09, so I'm going to get a copy of 200,000 plus that 9% of 2,000, and that's how I get this 1.09. So instead of solving it out right now, I'm just going to write down what's actually happening in the equation. Now, without solving this, I can see that if I multiplied 1.09 times 200,000, I would get the population for 2001. Let's see what happens with 2002. Now again, I'm purposely not solving because I want you to see if you can find a pattern. Now you'll notice that I took what was from previous. So again, we're looking always at the previous year. So here was the previous year. I multiplied it times 1.09. Now I'm taking the previous year, which is this, and again, I need to multiply that number by 1.09. Okay, interesting, still no solving. Let's look at 2003. I'm looking for the previous year. So I'm taking the number of 2002, which is right here, which again was 2001 times 1.09, and I need to multiply it by 1.09 again. Are you starting to see a pattern here? So as I continue to go down, I notice that in three years since 2003, I have one, two, three of my 1.09. So I could think of this really as writing 200,000 times 1.09 raised to the third power. Okay, now I can continue down, and I know that I need to get all the way to 2017. Just based on my pattern, I know that for 2017, I'm going to need to multiply 200,000 times 1.09 to what power? Take a minute and think for yourself. If you said 1.09 raised to the 17th power, you would be exactly correct. Now I can go ahead and solve this out. So a little quick math. Again, remember your order of operations. 1.09 raised to the 17th power first, then multiply that number by 200,000, and here's what you get. 865,526 and 68 hundredths of a person. Now we know in population that doesn't totally make sense. We could round to the nearest whole number, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it rounded to the nearest hundredth decimal place. Let's tie this back 
to the geometric sequence. We've been talking about sequences in class. Um, just so you know, this is an exponential function, so that's one way to approach it. But another way to approach it would be to use a geometric sequence. What would be the pros and cons to each? A geometric sequence is going to allow you to just have one whole year, so think about the end of the year. However, a geometric function would allow you to say, I'd like to know what's in the middle between 2002 and 2003, where's the population at? We can find any point on that graph versus doing a geometric sequence, we are looking for just one individual year and at the end of that year. So we know that for the geometric sequence, A is the first term. So we can see that R is our rate, N is the number of the term that you are trying to find. So what this is saying is if we take our rate and we raise it to the power of n minus 1, so the number term you're trying to find minus 1, and then we take that and we multiply it times our first term, we can find any numbered term in the sequence. Let's take a look at how this relates to what we got here. So we can see that if I'm trying to find x, and the question is what term is this? Now this is where it's really tricky. This is where it's important to be thinking through your formula. You would think that 2000 is the zero term, right? Because you're looking at 2001, well, it must be the first term because it ends in 2001. But think about it, 2000 can't be the zero term. It has to be the first term. 2001 is the second term. 2002 is the third term. You're seeing a pattern here. 2003 is the fourth term. All the way down to 2017 would actually be the 18th term, not the 17th term. So we're trying to find the 18th term in the sequence. Our starting number, our first term, is going to be 200,000. I'm going to multiply that times my rate. Now remember, my rate is not just 0 0.09. My rate is actually 1.09 because I'm, I'm trying to take this number and increase it by not only that number but that 9% in addition. If you multiply it by 0 0.09, it's actually going to end up getting smaller. Does that make sense? Because you're just finding that piece of it versus finding the whole plus the piece. So here is my rate of 1.09, and then I'm going to raise that to the power of 18 minus 1. You can see how this looks exactly like what we just did there. This is a great reason why it is super important to understand where your formulas are coming from, to see the pattern. There was a very intentional way that I showed my work so that I could make sure to check my formula, especially if I was confused and thinking, is this supposed to be 17 or 18? Because if you put 17 here, it's going to completely give you the wrong answer. So I would highly encourage you to show your work this way. Make sure you understand your formulas before you just mindlessly plug things in to your formulas for sequences. I hope you have a great rest of your day and hope this was helpful.